Good evening and welcome everybody to another edition of Music and Mixing. I'm your host DJ Michael Joseph. Music and Mixing is the show for, from, and by the mix DJ. But tonight we're going to, uh, every once in a while, actually more than every once in a while, quite often, we, we tend to cover topics that, um, that fit a lot more than just the mix DJ. And tonight is definitely one. Uh, we're going to be talking about laptops tonight. Uh, and don't start throwing anything into the chat until you know which direction I'm going because, you know, it's going to be kind of different than, than you probably expect from me. <clears throat> so I definitely want to say hello to some people in the chat as soon as I can get my chat window to open properly. So, John, John C., what's going on? John Colley, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate that. Howie, what's going on? Robin, hello. Uh, if you are watching me from somewhere, uh, feel free to shout out where you're from if you're from somewhere way different than where I'm at because I like to see the viewers that we have from all over the world. DJ Matt, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, Matt's from Youngstown, Ohio. Thank you. Uh, Robin's from Florida. Howie's from Jersey, Pennsylvania border. John's from Boston. John Jazz, what's going on? DJ Spin, what's going on? Thank you for joining in. We are on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch tonight. We're on a bunch of different places. Tonight we are talking about laptops, so hang in there. Uh, Berkeley, is that Maine? MA is Maine or Massachusetts? I don't know. So we're, we're going to say just Berkeley. Um, <laughs> we got, I think we have a good topic tonight. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, uh, what I do when it comes to DJ computers and why. And things you need to think about before you purchase your next one and stuff like that. So, again, we usually take a couple minutes here at the beginning. Uh, welcome everybody into the chat. And then I will, um, like I said, I will start. We will talk about tonight's topic. I'm trying to get this uh, thing to share the view for both so I can see everything. Um, I think, nope, that's not going to work. But we're going to leave it there. So, yeah. Cool. So uh, again, again, I thank you all for joining us. We are all over the place tonight. Um, uh, tonight's topic is about computers, DJ computers more specifically. And I have some cool stuff to show you that you've probably never seen before. You may have seen. I don't know. Um, but it's going to be good. Uh, I got, Like I said, I have a lot of stuff that I'm covering tonight. <clears throat> and then I'm going to answer questions uh, from your side. Now, keep in mind, I have not been DJing with computers as long as some people because I came to it very lately. And I will, t I will tell that story here in just a couple of minutes. About one more minute, we're gonna let everybody get into the into the chat, join in, and then we're gonna start in a, you know less than a minute now. I just want to make sure everybody's here. Um, I'm gonna turn my phone on vibrate so that in case I get a call, I can ignore it. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> All right. So tonight we're talking about DJ computers specifically, and I'm gonna take you on a very short journey right here at the beginning about me and DJ computers. And then we're going to drop into some stuff. I'm going to talk about some of the computers that I've had and, and used, things that I've kind of picked up over the years, good, bad, and different. Okay, and then then I can take your questions um, about computers. We can throw that into the discussion and all kinds of stuff like that. So I was late to coming to computers because um, I don't know if you remember a few months ago I had a guest on the show, uh, John Holman from Metro Mix, and I worked for him. Uh, in the clubs uh, back in the like early 2000s and around 2001 ish uh, he said hey I got this new thing over here computer program for DJing with and stuff why don't you come over and try it out so I went over to his house and tried it out and it was PC DJ Red with the little controller again this was like 2001 um, and I hated it so much that I avoided DJing with computers for nearly a decade um, I just didn't like it it was very early so you just you know, it's new. You couldn't have everything back then. That was a long time ago. Computers were different, everything. So I avoided it, and I started, like I said, I went from CDs to uh, Denon had the Denon 1200s that took thumb drives, and you could hook a, a, a keyboard up to it and type and see it on the little screen there and search, just like you do on a computer, but just had a smaller screen, um, but off thumb drives. And I did that for a while. And uh, it got tired of only being able to see like three songs because when you're scrolling through, you're only seeing about three songs on that tiny little screen. And I got tired of seeing that, you know, so small that I finally said, okay, I'm going to go and try the DJ computing now. Uh, uh, it, so what I ended up doing was when I ended up getting, uh, tried all the programs, every single program there was, I tried it. I uh, tried Virtual 6 and did not like it at all, but ended up getting a copy of Virtual 7 I believe it was at the DJ Expo that somebody gave it to me. And 
loved it. And I jumped right into it then, and that's when I started my MIDI mapping that I do, because you guys all know that I do a bunch of MIDI mapping. I'm gonna, I think my microphone's peaking just a bit. Um, so I started with those 1200s, because you could put them in media mode and connect them with you know one USB cord here, one USB cord here, and they both ran as uh, controllers, single-sided controllers. And I remapped the buttons on there to give myself six cue points and six effects. And uh, had even had a shift button I was able to do stuff with and did all the programming with that. And that's that's when I started with computers um, around 2009. But believe it or not, like I said, because I'm late getting to computers. And that's why I want to tell you this, because um, I, I should have jumped on it in, in 2001 when John started showing me that stuff. But I didn't actually DJ out in public with a DJ computer until 2010. So I've just just been over 10 years of DJing with computers. Um, I've used virtual the whole time. I absolutely love it. It does everything I can even imagine. And I even on my computer, I celebrated it a while back that I looked on there because virtual, you know, like most DJ computers, DJ softwares, it keeps track of what you played. And I have 10 years of play history there. And I think it's kind of cool. But tonight we're not talking about software, we're talking about computers. But I, I brought, the, like I said, I wanted to bring the computer side, in, the software side into it so that you understood that there's a journey there for me that wasn't easy. It wasn't something that I just jumped into uh, uh, right off the bat and said, "Yeah, this is for me." Um, it took it took a little bit of the 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 need to the, you know the want <clears throat> to be able to do more. And once I got that, <clears throat> I went bananas <laughs> with customizing and stuff. And uh, it's just crazy how far it's come. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to talk about. Um, uh, how we're going to go about tonight with this because. DJ computers are always a touchy subject. Number one, number one rule tonight, do not ask me, hey, MJ, which is the best computer for DJing? What computer should I get for DJing? Because there's no correct answer to that. Okay, everything works for everybody differently. So that never, ever, ever ask somebody that. You can ask them, what kind of computer do you like? What experiences have you had? But never go, what's the best computer for DJing? Because there's just no way to answer that. Number two, this is not a Mac versus PC show, okay? This is not a Mac versus PC show. I just want you to know that. Uh, there are a lot of people out there in the DJ community that do not understand why anybody in their life would ever use a Windows computer. Um, I personally have been using a Windows computer for over 10 years, have not had a single problem, not one problem. I've owned computers my whole life and have rarely had any sort of little thing. Um, I don't understand why people have a problem with Windows. Uh, it works for me. And I will tell you tonight, later on, when we get into this, I'm going to talk about why I chose the computer I chose because I believe what computer you buy is as important... No, I'm going to rephrase that. Is more important than what brand a computer you get or, or operating system you get. Okay, I think what you get is more important. Um, just to show you a little bit here that the fact that um, people do use Windows to DJ with. Um, uh, make me disappear here, hold on. Um, uh, right there. So this was from this past year's uh, Digital DJ Tips, DJ uh, 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 Census, they call it, from all around the world. And uh, as you can see there, they asked people, and there was people from every country, uh, The most, pe most of the people who DJed, who answered this, that filled out this uh, questionnaire, um, were from the United States. And as you can see, there are more people that call themselves DJs that use Windows than Mac. I'm not saying pick one or the other. I'm just saying if we're going to talk about this tonight, we have to acknowledge that, they, that they're that they both in there. Okay, You can't just say, oh, you just can't use Windows you, because people do. So that's not what I'm here tonight to tell you what to use. I'm going to help you think about it, learn about it, and go by what I chose. So that's one of the things that I think you need to look at there. Uh, also, before I go, look at what look what number three is. iPhone, and then Android smartphone. So following Mac are phones, then tablets. So that blows my mind that people are calling themselves DJs, that number three and four are phones. And I think that's kind of crazy and kind of almost um, uh, <laughs> not right in, in its own way. <laughs> Um, I also see a lot of people like with the phones, and I don't know if you just saw that DJ Rachel did this whole thing on using a tablet. It's her mini setup, and it was using one of the small. I'm not sure if it was the uh, um, 
Numark or the Hercules that she had. It's a small controller with a tablet running algorithm, and and people are using that. So that that's a very viable thing now. So the new argument is probably going to be laptops or tablets. I don't know. But keep in mind that that is something you have to think about. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what I use. Um, and then I'm going to uh, let me bring that back up here to make sure I'm getting to the right screen here. And I'm going to share with you my computer that I use currently. And then we're going to talk a little bit about later on why I chose it. Now, because I think that's important no matter whether you choose a Mac or PC. The things that I threw in there I think are important to think about. And that's what I want you to start thinking about uh, uh, for that. Okay. Um, let me make sure I'm looking at my notes here. I'm going to try to jump back and forth and catch the uh, chats if there's any there. Um, making sure I'm checking. Uh, I'm going to keep back and forth in the chats, uh, see what's there. We'll answer questions at the end if you have any. But here is the info on the computer that I currently use. Now, also, before I start sharing this, keep in mind that this computer that I use to DJ with, it's the same computer when you see me doing a, a, a broadcast over there. Uh, I use one one laptop. I, I do not use two laptops. I'm broadcasting, DJing, answering chats, everything from the exact same laptop I'm DJing from. There are no two laptops. I'm not using a laptop and a phone. Um, I did that at the beginning. I had the laptop and the other thing. Um, the only thing I use for those live streams aside from my computer is that I have a tablet there with the buttons to change screens. Like tonight I'm just doing it with my mouse and you know, and changing them over here on this program. But over there, I have buttons that will shift the different scenes that I have. So aside from that computer, <clears throat> everything is done from that computer. DJing, broadcasting, recording, all at the exact same time. So I wanted a computer that could do all that. And this is the route that I went. I ended up going with a gaming computer for a couple of reasons that we're going to talk about later on. And again, it's something to think about. It may not be for you, but I want you to at least think about it. Okay, so we're going to go to left screen now. All right, so I currently am running a Lenovo uh, Y700. It's a 15.6 inch laptop. I purchased it November 7th, 2016. So it is four years and five months old. In, in the world of technology, that is kind of old. So I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people keep stuff for a zillion years. Um, for also a lot of people, that's an old computer. <clears throat> I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying that, you know, that's it. The, the previous computer I had to this, uh, was very much like this. It was also a Lenovo IdeaPad that I had for seven years until the video um, uh, GPU went on it. And that was a hard, hard onboard GPU. So when it went, uh, I couldn't like resolder and take it out. So when it went, it went. And that was seven years, give or take seven years um, on that. Uh, it is, a, it is again, remember, it's almost <clears throat> almost four and a half years old. It is a 6th gen i5. Uh, the, the Hertz and, and, and all that isn't all that great. Uh, it came with Windows 10 Home, and I upgraded to Windows 10 Pro, which I recommend anybody, if you don't have Windows 10, go for it. Um, I don't even know why I put the anti clear that, that in there. That doesn't even need to be in there. It does have an NVIDIA... Uh, uh, video card with four gig of RAM on the video card that I currently have turned off because I feel that the onboard processor works better than that NVIDIA does. I can't explain it. I've used both, gone back and forth. I've done it where I've done one broadcast where one, one of those uh, video cards is running the screen I'm looking at and one of those video cards is pushing out to the video that I'm doing, whether it be on a screen or a projector. I've tried all of those and this is the way I think it works best. I came with 8 gig of RAM. Uh, I still have the same 8 gig of RAM. I didn't change any of that. Um, this, the original C drive was 128 gig, uh, kind of like an M.2 style uh, a drive. And I swapped that out for uh, a Samsung 970 Evo 1 terabyte M.2 drive. That's my main drive. That's C drive. And that's the program where the program's at. And then the second drive it came with was a one terabyte regular hard disk drive that I replaced with a one terabyte uh, Samsung solid state drive. Um, and that's drive D. So drive C is the programs and drive D is the music. And they're both internal. And I will talk about later why I chose dual internal and and different things like that. It did have a one-year factory warranty on it, but this is where I paid extra for it. And you'll see the price of it and what it all comes down to next. I gotta make me go out of the way there. All right, so it cost uh, 
when it was finished, $849. $850, whatever you call it. I paid an extra $79 for a three-year, um, between that 70 and the 80 is a three-year anything happens to it thing. So I spent $160 that if something breaks, I don't have to send it in. They come to me. They come to my house and repair it if anything goes on it. If, if the day before that warranty goes up, I crack that thing over my knee, they will replace it. Anything whatsoever in three years of DJing with it is covered. And that's why I paid the extra uh, $70 in tax. And then it came to $1,100 is what I ended up paying on that. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, um, the computer that I use and why it does so many things. Um, I'm going to, like I said, again, I'm going to try to um, uh, check the uh, questions when I can. I, I kind of want to get through this because I want, you guys might have a lot of questions. Um, but uh, that's what I'm running currently, okay? And I have a backup computer, and this is, I think, is super important that you have to have a backup computer. I can't explain that enough. You need a backup computer that works as well as your primary computer. You don't want some crappy backup that's slow and kind of blah, blah. Your backup computer should be just as good. Okay, you may pay less for it. It may be smaller. It may be whatever. That's fine, but it should be just as good and reliable. And this is what I run as my backup computer. I'm a big fan of Lenovo. I bought another Lenovo. Yes, I did. Um, this is a Yoga. It's one of those ones that flip over. It's a 15.6. Again, it's a touchscreen laptop. I got a good deal on this one. Um, uh, it, it came with a 10th, 10th Gen i5. Um, again, the megahertz aren't that bad. Uh, 12 gigabyte memory. Uh, RAM, that's 12 gigabyte RAM. Uh, it came with a 256 solid, like an M.2, and I upgraded to a one terabyte M.2 on that. And then I split that M.2 into a C drive and a D drive. So it has the same as the other one computer. So it matches instead of putting, again, I couldn't put a second drive in this one. So for the price that I got it, like I said, this the, the 829 is including the factory warranty and the one year extra protection plan. So I'm covered two years anything happens to it whatsoever. Um, it was uh, an open box, so it wasn't brand new, but I wanted something. So again, I put the, the one terabyte M.2, split it into C and D so I can have my C drive as the programs and my D drive is where my music is. So when I make backups of my other computer, um, it's on there, but it's it's both solid state drives. Uh, I believe this is also an, uh, an, a Samsung Evo M.2 because I, I, I just think they're good drives. I think they're very, very 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 strong and very very fast um but that's that's my backup computer it's not as good as my new one so if my current one goes i'm not going to switch this to my main and then buy a backup i'm buying another main this is my backup so this doesn't get used as much um it's pretty simple it's the one that i travel with so when i went to las vegas last year uh for the uh dj and tv uh, expo slash uh, photo booth expo and spun there. This is what I took with me, my backup computer, because I just didn't want to take the other one. If something happened to it, I, I want to be safe. But this one was just as good enough that I could run video and do everything from it. And that includes record my sets as I'm DJing. So that's why I buy the higher things like that. Um, just to explain the two of those there. Um, I want to talk now about what you have. And I want you to start thinking about stuff. And then I'm going to tell you why I purchased some of the stuff I purchased. Um, when you're talking about what you have, um, think about what you have as a DJ computer. And think about what you wish you had as a DJ computer. Because it's okay to think about that. Because that's going to get your mind in a direction uh, uh, for thinking you know, a little bit better. Uh, you have to also keep in mind that, you know, even with the, you know, we show the, the statistics from the DJ uh, thing that also their statistics on full-time DJs There's only about 10% of us that do full-time DJing. Everybody else, it is a secondary job or whatever. So this may not be your number one job. You may not put a lot of money into it. It might just be some extra money for the weekend. I have a friend of mine that all he wants to do each month is DJ enough to make his truck payment. So that like his truck, you know, his new truck is all coming from DJing. And that's all he has to worry. He says, I, as long as I make my truck payment from, from DJing, the rest of my money, you know, from my day job goes for everything else. It's a smart way to work through things. Um, so it, when I'm talking about what you want, it may not be that far out of where you are, or it may be way, way outside where you are. 
So you have to kind of think about that. Um, with my laptop, I, I always tell people, you know, you can't just buy a you know a five hundred dollar laptop and expect it to be work quality. It's just not going to happen. It may get you there, but it won't get you there well. It won't get you there reliably for years. And that's where I think the difference is when you upgrade and, and pay more. Uh, like I always tell people, look about how much the cheapest Mac cost. Because Macs are much more expensive. Look about the cheapest Mac cost and expect to spend about that much on a Windows computer and you'll be just as good. The previous computer that I had prior to this one was a lot like this Lenovo. And I have a friend of mine, DJ friend, that bought a Mac laptop that had, it, we laughed because we had the identical hardware because they were all using the same hardware, the same processor, the same memory, the same everything. We both had identical everything. So aside from mine was a Windows, his was Mac running Mac OS and mine was running Windows, there was no difference. I paid about $1,200 for that one. He paid $3,700 for that. Now, you might say the operating system is the only thing that matters, and that's fine. That's okay. You have to get what works for you. But what I'm saying is don't bust on somebody else who wants something different because clearly a lot of people are using the other one, and clearly it works because I have been using it. Um, I want you to think about your laptop. Uh, uh, how do you use it? Now, here's the important thing. I think you have to think about what I think a lot of people kind of get screwed up when it comes to Windows is uh, what do you use your DJ computer for? Is it used for other things than DJing? Do you surf the net on it? Do you download movies? Do you all that? Because a work computer should be about work. You should It should be separate from the one that's your, your daily driver. Okay, that I know a lot of you go, I can't afford that. I understand, but I'm just giving you advice that there should be two separate computers, the one you use and the one you work with. And that's, I'm going to leave it at that because here's the further step. Let's take a further step down that, those steps. Do you let your kids play with your computer? Do you let someone else use your DJ computer? Because that can really screw things up too. You might go, oh, no, no, but I'm doing two, two different logins. You'd be surprised what can happen. So again, that's, that's one of the most important things I think is that you dedicate a computer to DJing and that's it. Don't don't screw with it. All right. And the other one is I think is important is how often do you update? I think updates are important with certain things, especially with Mac, uh, certain uh, operating systems that they come out with because they don't pre-release any of the information about their operating systems. A lot of the, the hardware companies and different things in the software, the DJ software they use don't have time to get up to speed before it's released. So they have to start making their hardware and software work after Apple releases that that next uh, uh, operating system. So they're in a little disadvantage there. It's not a bad thing. They just have to, because they don't give them the information ahead of time, they have to once that starts. So I, on those situations, I would tell you not in a million years update until you know it extremely works. I mean, don't even, don't even screw around with updating. Um, Windows, I'm pretty good at jumping in because like I know my virtual, I update as soon as they... Uh, put a new out an update on it i do it out and i test it here in the studio um i i have my windows computer not on automatic update but whenever uh, uh i have another computer that i use here in the studio that when it shows an update i'll take a look at that update and if i feel it's okay to update and especially if it's early in the week when i can test it i'll update the dj computer's windows and test it out before i go anywhere um, but I won't just leave it on to just update whenever it wants to update. So I may go a couple of updates on the Windows, but I do stay up with it as much as I can, including drivers and everything. So again, also running virtual, I don't have problems because it runs on everything. So that also then takes you to, uh, um, there, there's a way of thinking with this, is that do you want a computer to be plug and play? You want your software to be plug and play without any adjustments? Then that's why a lot of people go with Mac and Serato because you don't have to do much with it. Pretty much everybody runs it the same. Virtual Windows are the other side of that, just like uh, Apple uh, phones and Android phones. Uh, Android and Windows, you can customize to the ends of the earth. Uh, uh, virtual, you can customize to the ends of the earth. And that's why I like it. But if you're not a person who customizes, you just want it to plug it in and work, then you might go with Serato and go with Apple. Those are reasons to think about. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying when it comes to you and your computer, because that's what this show is about, your computer, 
what works for you in that sense. And I want you to think about that. Um, I also want to ask the question, are you currently making plans to buy your next laptop? I don't care if it is six years away. Start planning to buy your next laptop. Put money away somewhere for something. For me, I was talking about this Monday night on uh, the Monday Night Chat Show. I also do the Monday Night Chat Show if you if you don't follow it. It's uh, on Disc Jockey News, uh, also YouTube, just same place you're here. But Monday night's 9 p.m. with John Young and Dan Carpenter. And we were talking about... Um, uh, do you plan ahead for things when you have to buy in the DJ world? And some people save in a special account or keep certain amounts separate. For me, I have a, a PayPal account, and that's the one that I put money into uh, for DJ things, emergency DJ things. So if a computer goes down, that's where I go to to get my, my computer thing. Or if a, a controller goes down, that's where I go to. So I keep stuff aside for an emergency sake. And if it comes time to buy it, buy it, then I buy it from there. But it's there. Plan ahead because let's say you have a couple of gigs in the same week and your computer, uh, something happens to it and you have to take it back to get it repaired. What are you going to use in the meantime? If you don't have a backup, then you have to go get something. So one, one or the other, have yourself saved there. Um, I, I saw, did saw a comment because I, I'm not seeing the comments right now because I, I have my notes here. Um, about a hard solid state drives versus regular hard disk drives. I will tell you every time, whatever you can do to get a solid state drive in your computer, if you can, do it. If you want to buy buying a new computer, make sure it has solid state drives. You have no idea how much faster it is, more reliable, everything. They do have their downfalls by how many times they can write and rewrite because you actually start losing space that way with the solid state drives. But it is so freaking worth it, I can't begin to tell you. It is so worth it getting the solid state drives and pay, paying extra for them. Um, I want to talk about big versus small because the small 13 inch MacBook is very popular with a lot of DJs, but uh, not with me because I don't have a problem with my eyes, but a lot of DJs when they start getting my age can't see that 13 inch laptop. They want giant ones. I've actually heard guys talk about buying 17 inch laptops to DJ with. That blows my mind, but you may have to. So that's something you may have to start thinking about when you're buying your next laptop that if you can't see and you need that bigger laptop that's something you're gonna have to think about way ahead of time you know start searching brands see how much they are the bigger computers are obviously going to cost a little more so you have to be prepared for that um, light versus heavy um my this is just a good example my main computer that i use like i said the one you see me there the one that i gave you the first stats on um is a gaming computer and it's a lot heavier than my backup because my backup is not intended to be for that. It's strong, it's good, but it's much lighter. I love having that extra power, so I will carry around that heavier, bigger laptop. Um, you may not want to, and that's perfectly okay. So you have to think a little bit about, you know, if you want to buy um, a bigger or smaller, if that's your route. But these are things that you, you need to think about, you know. Uh, if you're going to need the bigger screen, you're going to have to go to a bigger computer. Um, uh, also, backlit keyboard, if that's important to you. For me, it's an absolute necessity. I cannot DJ without that because I DJ in clubs and bars where it's dark. I have to have a backlit keyboard no matter what. So that's not even a question for me. And the other thing that I, I, I is important to me that a lot of people don't care about is that I want that number pad, that numeric pad off to the side of numbers because most of the time when I'm typing in something into my DJ software, I'm typing in beats per minute, uh, uh, decade stuff like that so i'm doing like 120-125 or something like that i want those i can do those i can do those without looking because i learned numeric stuff when i was younger in, in school so that is an important thing to me someone else might not care about having that numeric pad i have to have that numeric pad period there's no question about it i have to have that so that changes again things i buy and things that you might want to think about um Another thing to think about is, do you plan on putting your DJ logo on the back of the laptop, the, the top of the laptop top, back of the top, laptop top? Um, and you might need to think a little bit about that, depending on what you plan on putting on there. Different companies have them uh, already pre-made. So you can get the Mac stuff pretty easily. Uh, other ones, you can get stuff to put on there. And again, this is all stuff about your computer, because it's your DJ computer. Um, you might also want to think about coverings. Uh, this is like the extra stuff, coverings for the keys. So if you want to keep stuff from getting dirty and down in there, some people that's a necessity. Um, extra power cords. Uh, I know a lot of people like the Macs because uh, they have you know, a lot of, a lot of them, not all of them, have interchangeable power cords as opposed to one that maybe has a, a you know one that's specifically towards that that brand or whatever. 
Um, but I also recommend always getting an extra power cord. Like in my car, 100% of the time, no matter where I'm going, what I'm doing, there is an extra power cord for my DJ computer and an extra power cord for my controller in there. So there's always both in there all the time. And I have multiples because I have a set. It's in the hard case, that thing that you see right there. That's the hard case. I have a set in the soft case that I use because sometimes I take the soft case. Um, I have, do I have two or one in the, I think I have one of them in the, the bag that's normally hanging back there and then the set in the car. So I'm always, that's always extra important to me is all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of like my spiel when it comes to this. And I do want to talk about one more thing that I thought was kind of interesting. And uh, there was someone in one of the chats recently that told me they picked this up. And I asked them, I said, you know, once you get it going, let me know what you think of it. Because, uh, like I said, I like to buy the, the gaming computers because I can customize them. See, again, that's important to me. I want to be able to change out drives. I want dual drives. That's important to me. I must have dual drives, and I must be able to change them out. So, like I said, this one came with a regular hard disk drive, and I wanted a solid-state drive. So I need to be able to work on them. Some computers, you can't do that, or you have to tear a lot apart to change something out. So, again, the bigger gaming computers, more weight to carry, but because of the stuff I want to do, if the battery goes bad, I can easily replace the battery. I can change out both the, the C drive or the D drive, with about eight screws, that's about it. It doesn't take much to get to that. Um, but again, that's all stuff that I, I think about when, when you get to some of these things. Internal, external drives, that's another thing. I didn't even talk about that. Um, like for me, I absolutely want the internal drives as opposed to an external drive. Because to me, it's just an extra thing that could go bad. So if you have that cord one way or the other, something could go bad. Having an internal is one less. But you say, well, what if what if the hard drive goes bad? It can go bad. But like I said, with mine, it's easier to replace. I can't just plug another one in there. I mean, I have one with me that I can. But it's not this, you know what, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a little different. Um, a lot of people like to have their external drives so they can go to someone else's computer. If they're DJing with them, just pop in their computer and DJ. That's fine, too. I don't do that. I, I'm never DJing somewhere where I don't use my own computer. So... That didn't fit me, but it might be something you need to think about. Um, again, all these different things, like why I bought the, the gaming computer, because it was um, all these customizable things that I could do with it and the numeric pad and all that. But this computer I want to show you here in a second came out a while back. It is by the company X, uh, XMG. I don't know a lot about them, but they put out a computer called the XMG DJ15, and it is literally designed by DJs for DJs. And I want to show it to you a little bit here, and then I'm going to give you the, the page information because you need to go watch the video this guy did with this because it's crazy. All right, so this is the computer. They come in different colors, uh, and you can um, uh, do different things with it, you know, different settings, you know, however you want that. They have in different colors, different things like that. You can configure them however you want like that. Um, there's a lot of plugs, which, are again, are important to me a lot of the Macs don't have a bunch of plugs. I have to, I want a bunch of plugs, okay? So again, that's why I like my my, my uh, uh, gaming computer because I have an HDMI out on it. I have multiple uh, USB A's, USB C's. I have all of that there and I want that. And again, that's what this one was designed with a lot of different stuff you can throw in it. Um, it's that they've worked on the latency and different things like that, but it is di designed for computers, both recording and playing. Uh, this is the video, so if you want to go to x, xmg.gg and, and look at this, this video, in this video, I'm not going to play it, but this guy does a set in this video where he is running Rekordbox, Virtual, Serato, Ableton, and something else, all at the same time, playing music, and he's recording it live. So again, that's why I like these computers like this because I'm never going to be short of power. I can do anything I want. You will never run four DJ softwares at the same time. But he does, and it's kind of impressive to watch it. But like I said, these computers are kind of designed by that. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of what they have there, the memory and different things. It, it is changeable up to different things, uh, different CPUs. Uh, I don't know what... Uh, a lot of these, I can't tell what generation they are without looking at them sometimes. So you can get an i5 or an i7 on that. It's a 15.6, same as I use. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, but this is a computer that is completely designed 
by DJs for DJs, and the customization starts at 1100 and goes up. Um, I may consider this next time. I don't know. It's neat. I like my Lenovo because I can get a three-year warranty with them and absolutely do anything I want to. Um, but again, that's why I kind of chose that. So I'm going to go back to the chat now, see if I can see some questions. Um, see if you guys have any questions in there. Um, uh, Sean said, smart man with the SSD. Uh, again, I can't tell you what a difference that makes unless you've put an SSD in an old computer that was crappy and you see how much faster it is. So if you have it in a computer that's strong already, it's going to blow your mind. So SSD plus it's less to break. Like I said, it does have the thing. The more you write and rewrite over time, you get you lose space on it. You, you're never supposed to defrag them either because that also takes away. But if you're willing to give that up, the speed and, and the security of the fact that there's no moving parts on it are absolutely worth it. Um, here, Sean says he has both a MacBook Pro and an Alien. Alien software, Alien's good. I know lots of people that use Alien. Um, I've never used an Alien. I, I, I mean, I've touched them, used them. I had a friend of mine that, that has one, and I've kind of checked it out. It's really close to my Lenovo. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, gaming computers out there in the world right now. Um, I like them. Again, they're heavy and bigger, so they may not be for you. Um, like I said, it is bigger. That's all I can tell you. I probably should have brought that out and showed you the difference between the two. Um, where is that at? Oh, that's all the way back there. Um, where's the other computer at? It's there. Hold on one second here. I want to grab this and show you both of them side by side. I, I can't hear you. Okay, I'm back. So here is mine. It's big. It's monstrous. And that, that may be changing soon. That's all I want to say. Um, it's big. I like it. It works for me. There's a bunch of different plugs on it. Um, backlit keyboard. Um, it's my little thing there. I have to remind me that uh, whatever you're doing in life, you just got to remember to have fun. Um, but it, like I said, it's much bigger. But I like it. And then my backup computer, because I did have this over here is nearly the same thing. It's a Lenovo also, but it is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? You know, reversible. All right, so I want to show you two things that this, both of these computers have the exact same size screen. Keep that in mind. 15.6 on both of them. If I can pick this up without dropping one or the other. Because this one's older, you can see the screen difference with the outside around there. Um, you can see like everything in my studio there. Um, but the screen size is different. Uh, I'm going to close them both. You can see both of them closed. Um, size wise. <laughs> bigger. Like it's that much bigger. Let me put it over to the corner here. You can see how much bigger. Same size screen. But because the other one is uh, um, the gaming computer, that's where you kind of, you, you lose a lot of space because, like I said, it's designed for that. Ginormous speakers on this thing. Incredible sound. Um, may not be your thing, but, you know, there you go. But these are mine. Um, I like them. It may not be for you. Move that out of the way there. And I'll go back to taking questions here. Um, Dan Carpenter's in a thing. Dan, I talked him into buying the same laptop as me. <laughs> And it is, it is, it's a heavy beast. Like I said, it's not for everybody. Um, uh, Philip was saying that it's not, that not available in the U.S. That's the XMG. I like to find out where the person who bought it from. I, 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 I agree with you. I don't think it is available in the U.S. But there was someone in one of the chats that bought that XMG, and I'm like, I'm curious to see if it's that much better since it's specifically designed for that way. So, I'm taking questions now about computers. Um, I don't know what else to share with you. Um, I also want to point out if I can find where it is it's up here hold on for one second I have stuff everywhere here in the studio this is also a Windows computer it is the Surface Go it's this big with the little thing I mean you can run it as whatever this runs Windows 10 I do have virtual on there and I can DJ from it so no joke and this is a very, this isn't even a Pentium processor. It's what they call a something gold. Not even, not even a strong processor. 
Um, but you can, I DJ from this. I've, I've hooked up my little uh, um, Hercules one to that, and I can DJ from that. So this can be an extra backup uh, when I'm out somewhere. If I need a second set somewhere, you know, like ceremony, which I don't do weddings and stuff, but ceremonies. But it's just something to look at and think about all those things there with what you buy when it comes to computers. Um, I did, Like I said, I didn't want tonight to be about Mac versus uh, a PC. I want you to think about what works for you, what you need, um, because this is your tool. You have to think of it. I always tell people, think of it like a work truck. If you were a carpenter and you needed a work truck, would you go out and buy the cheapest work truck you could get, or would you spend money and get something that you know is going to haul stuff, be able to tow stuff, etc.? And that's the way I kind of look at the DJ computer: is that it's my it's my work vehicle. I can't go go to work without that. Um, other people do events where they maybe do lighting and different things like that, where they don't always play music. That's not me. <clears throat> I always have to have a computer to work with, and that's why my main and my backup <clears throat> are strong and usable. And that's why I've kind of spent the money on those. Uh, because, it, like I said, it's my work truck. It's how I make my living. So I need it to be reliable. And if one of them goes down, like I said, I know the other one is good enough that I can pop it in, use it, and I won't even skip a beat. It, it will run exactly the same way. And I think that's important to have that. Uh, just even for your own comfort. Um, I used to have this older, I don't even know what it was. It wasn't... Um, Oh, I don't remember what it was laptop brand it was that I had as a backup, and it was much slower. And I, for after a while there, I'm like, I can't be doing this because I would load a song and it would be like, it would load, and I'd be like, I can't do that as a backup. So I got this one, and again, it just zips right across there. Um, RAM is good. Like I said, that one, the, the main DJ computer only has eight. The backup computer has 12. Uh, that makes also a big difference too. Uh, if I went up, I didn't feel I needed to go up on the main computer past eight. When I when I upgraded all the rest, so I thought it was fine, and I still think it's fine because, like I said, I do all my stuff on it, and it doesn't even skip a beat. So, taking questions, uh, Sal DJ is from Miami. What's going on? Welcome, thank you there. Um, anybody else here in the chat want to ask questions about DJ computers? Like I said, I have nothing against any of them. I just am trying to advise you and and preparing you for the next direction you're going because it could come at you faster than you can imagine. You could be one day going, "Holy crap, I need a DJ computer." And this is something you, if you've thought about this, you know, you can maybe, you know, take that step and move forward. Um, again, I go through Lenovo on mine and I build mine. I pick what I want in it. And that's kind of why I like that uh, because I can um, uh, put what I want on it. Uh, Phil asked, what are my specs on my Lenovo? I shared that and I will share that screen again. I don't know if I can find the right picture here. All right, so this is what my current DJ computer is running. And keep in mind, as I say here, where, where am I going? Left screen. Keep in mind at the top, uh, it's it's five and a half years old. So I bought this five and a half years ago. And it may not even have been the newest, newest one they had. So this could have been a year old in their specs too. So it's 6th Gen i5, um, Windows 10. Oh, I upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. Um, it does have an NVIDIA uh, uh, video card in it with 4 gig of RAM on the card. I have it turned off because I don't use it. Uh, eight, eight, gigabit, 8 gigabyte of DDR4. Um, again, I could easily went up more. I just didn't feel I needed it at that point. Uh, it came with 128 uh, M.2 in it, and I replaced that 128 M.2 with a one terabyte uh, Samsung 970 Evo. Um, so that's my C drive, and then it also has an internal D drive that originally came with a one terabyte regular hard disk drive, and I switched it out with a Samsung uh, 860 Evo one terabyte SSD SATA 3. Um, so that's what I'm running in my main DJ computer. It works for me, but again, like you saw, it's a honking big computer. Dan in the chat, Dan Carpenter, who, like I said, we do the Monday night chat show together. Um, he can t testify to what a honking big computer it is. But it, like I said, it works for me. Someone else does not want something that big, and that's fine. In the same way, as, like I said, I know guys who are buying 17 inches because they need need the bigger screen, and that's fine. So you got to find what works for you. I'm willing to carry the extra weight to have that extra power. Even I may not need it. It's like, why do you have a car that goes 200 miles an hour? Just to say, I have a car that goes 200 miles an hour. I don't, you know, that's just me. Um, so, anybody else questions in the chat? I, I hope that I didn't out talk you with questions here. Um, uh, that is not a DJ computer question necessarily, but that's how do you remove duplicate songs and MP3s from the H disk drive? If you go on to 
Disc Jockey News' YouTube page, where you're watching this right now, uh, youtube.com forward slash Disc Jockey News, and search within their videos about finding duplicates. I think I've done two videos in there with two totally separate ways to find and remove duplicates. Plus, there are people that commented on the videos with other ideas. Um, but that, that's instead of me going into it here, because it's, it's a long, ridiculously long process. But if you're using virtual, virtual has things in there built that will find duplicates. And there are other uh, programs you can use. Uh, look at that. Like I said, look for uh, removing duplicates or something like that. The video is. And uh, I talk about multiple programs that you can use to, to find duplicates and stuff like that. So that's how I'm going to answer that. Uh, and pretty much any topic I've ever done, I've covered the topic several times. I think I've done the DJ computer thing three. I think this is the third time. I've done download services at least three times. Uh, I, I've done a lot. And I'm happy to come back to them because things change. Um like I said, the last computer I had prior to this, I ran about six and a half years, six years, something like that, before that, that onboard GPU went. Um, if this one goes in a couple years, then we'll do the whole process over, and I'll talk about the new computer. But I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's going to be something similar to that, because like I said, I want to work on it. If I go three years down the road and go, I want more RAM, I want to be able to myself tear it apart, put more RAM in it. If I want to change hard drives, I want to be able to change a hard drive. If I want to go, a one terabyte doesn't cut it anymore, I want a two terabyte. I want to be able to do that myself, and that's kind of the purpose of that. Um, so any other questions? Uh, you guys hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's a good night. Happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way, for, for anyone who's celebrating that. Um, uh, forgot about that. Kind of slipped through today, even though it's on my calendar. Um, appreciate that. So anybody else in the chat, questions? Um, I think this is a good topic. I hope we get a lot of people re-watching. Feel free to share, uh, like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, question here. It says, are you turning off the NVIDIA through Windows control panel or just disabling the GPU in, in VDA? I'm shutting it off in Windows. It's completely shut off in Windows to the point where I, I know there's another step I need to do because it looks for it when you do the boot up. And I, I've got it. And I know I can go into the startup menu and have it not look for that. But I, I didn't want to take it that far out in case I ever did want to bring it back online. It wouldn't be a big pain to bring it back online by going into like the BIOS, you know, you know the, what is it, F2 or whatever you hit the beginning of the BIOS. Uh, it's in there, but when you go into, I have it shut off within the Windows uh, menu system. Um, and I'm telling you, I was having it sometimes seize up on when I was DJing videos and different things. And I tried it just using the uh, computer uh, the onboard one, and I've tried just using the NVIDIA, and I was having problems both ways, and I'm like, it was driving me crazy. I said, well, I'm going to disable one and see if that changes it. And I disabled the NVIDIA, and everything worked so freaking smoothly. I was like, I may not... It could be me not having it set up right, maybe. That's possible. Um, I, I mean, that completely be my fault, or it could be something, the fact, the way that Windows runs through both of those in a software because you can right click on virtual and choose which uh, GPU you want it to run. So if I wanted to start it up using the onboard one, I can right click on it and uh, start with GPU onboard or right click on it, start with uh, NVIDIA card and it would run, virtual would run off of that card. I can do that, but even doing that, I still had the same problem. So I decided to shut it off and everything went great. Um, so that's my thought behind that. Uh, I, I know John uh, Colley, who asked the question, uh, uh, he saw some of the problems it was giving me on the video. Uh, why that? Like I said, I, I chose. I, I both ran Windows off of the onboard GPU, and 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 virtual off the onboard GPU. I ran them both off the Nvidia. I ran one off one. I switched them, ran one off run until I shut it off. It, it still came in the same problem and didn't have a problem anymore. So there's weird things like that that happened because I was also telling him that when uh, Virtual came out with their 64-bit program, um, the ASIO drivers were so hot and peaky that it was it was terrible. It was horrendous. But I switched over because it's Windows. It has that Windows, whatever, Windows audio. I, I call it Wasabi drivers. I switched to the Wasabi drivers and everything was perfect. So little things like that can make a big difference. You could say, oh, this computer's crap, but it could be just something simple like changing drivers or something like that. Changing, like I said, someone could say, oh, that computer's crap. You know, you're having stuff crash. Well, I shut off the other uh, NVIDIA card and it worked fine. So there's a lot into a lot of that stuff. So you have to kind of think about that. But like I said, that's where I came to that. Like I said, we're going from the 64-bit program and all that different things like that. Um, um, 
I'm looking at here. It says, so everyone doing reviews on the new laptop, I want to buy one, but yet I can't because I'm in the U.S. Makes no sense. Cool. I love reading stuff like that. We have a lot of people tuned in tonight. We have a bunch of people tuned in right now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're taking the last couple questions before we're over tonight. Uh, I will be back again next week, 9 p.m., same thing, same show. Uh, uh, if you have ideas for topics, let me know. Uh, I'm looking for things. This one actually came from John Monday night. He, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do for the Wednesday night show, and he rambled something off, and I'm like, oh, my word, I can do that. So if you have topic ideas for future shows, hit me up, send them to me. Uh, I'm on all the social medias as DJ Michael Joseph. So you can find me any social media whatsoever, DJ Michael Joseph. You can send me uh, uh, an email uh, through my web uh, webpage, DJ Michael Joseph, MJ at DJ Michael Joseph.com, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm everywhere. Um, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> uh, somebody probably will someday. I may even take myself out of the game. But yeah, it's interesting as we get back into things. Some stuff's coming up. I do have some gigs coming up. Some people contacting me. So finally things are moving a little bit forward. I don't know what, what it's going to be or anything. But I can honestly tell you from my point of view, I am starting to move forward with some gigs, live gigs, uh, including this Saturday. I have another one again. I'm back at the casino again this Saturday. Um, so it's just little bit by little bit. So again... Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, no more questions. So that's good. Um, I hope you like this. Share this. Talk about it. Like it. All that kind of stuff. Uh, like the show. Share the show. I also have a page on on Facebook called MJ uh, DJ DJ Michael Joseph on Disc Jockey News. So I think it's uh, Facebook.com forward slash DJ MJ on DJ and TV. And I put a lot of the news stories over there. So please go over and click on that and follow that. Um, I have two Facebook pages. DJ Michael Joseph 1. DJ Michael Joseph 2. Um, I also have all of them. So just visit me on one of them. Like me uh, commenting. And today I just got on because Android uh, just got the beta version of Clubhouse. So I'm now on Clubhouse. You can find me on Clubhouse as at DJ Michael Joseph. Uh, it's with Android. So I, again, that's why I like Android because I can do some hacking. And I got I got it on there and I got it working. So try to find me over there and we'll see how things go. So until next time, as I always try to end my show with something positive, I want to encourage you, uh, uh, let, let the fact that there are gigs opening up and places opening up, uh, that there are options. Be cautious, be smart. Uh, you know, don't jump into things head, head first. Kind of go into it with some wisdom. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, network with your fellow DJs because crap can happen and you might need one of them and they might need one of you. And it doesn't matter who needs who. It's going to benefit you to network with someone and take the time to do that because that's super freaking important. I can't explain to you how important networking with other DJs are. Um, so that's about it for tonight. Uh, until next time, uh, uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, have some fun DJing. Practice. And I'll see you next time. Good night and God bless.